If you want to get WLED up and running to control your RGB LEDs wirelessly, but you have no idea where to get started with getting WLED installed, that's what we're going to cover today, getting WLED installed on an ESP8266, getting it configured to join your Wi-Fi network, and allowing you to use it through a web browser or a free mobile app. Here I have an ESP8266 on a Node MCU board, and it's plugged into USB on the laptop, ready to be programmed with WLED. We just want to get WLED up and running from scratch just as soon as possible as a quick start. So starting from a blank web page, we can go to WLED.me, and that will redirect us to this link on GitHub. From here, there's this wiki, which is more quick start info and some info on settings. So if you have any actual problems or you want to do more advanced things, you can come to that wiki. Otherwise, what we really need from here is the releases, and that's where the software releases are. We're going to go with the latest version, even though it's only in beta, as it will say here as well, just to get up and running. So if we expand this assets area, since we are using NodeMCU with an ESP8266, we want this binary file here. So we click and save it somewhere, and now we need a programmer to get this into the actual module. I'm going to use ESP Home Flasher, and if I expand this, there's a Windows and Mac version here. After downloading, you just launch the program. When I launched ESP Home Flasher, in the serial port section, it automatically has the USB serial port for the module chosen. It's the only thing I have plugged in with a USB UART. Otherwise, you would just choose from a list. For the firmware, now we browse to the version of WLED that we just downloaded somewhere. So it knows what serial port the module's on, it knows what firmware we are putting in. Now we just click to flash. When it's done, we can close this flasher, and we'll reset the module just to make sure that it's running WLED. So at this point now, the module itself should be acting as a Wi-Fi access point that we can connect directly to. And that's what we need to do to start configuring. So on the laptop, I look for a network called WLED-AP, and I join that. When it asks for a password, the default is lowercase WLED1234. When we join, there may be an automatic page popping up, but let's just say there isn't, so we close that. Now we're joined directly to that module. We can access its internal web server by going to wled.me, and that gets us there. Or we could also get there with a direct IP, 4.3.2.1, and that gets us there. So we could go into these controls and try a few things out and control lights directly, but for now, let's just go to Wi-Fi settings because what we want to do is not have to directly join this network on this module. We want to go back to using our regular Wi-Fi and have this module join our regular Wi-Fi. So here we enter in our Wi-Fi's network name and password, and once this module has joined our network, we can access it by going to whatever this link is. So let's make it more rememberable. WLED-node1. So when we want to talk to this device, it's at WLED-node1.local. So let's save that. Now I'm back on my regular Wi-Fi. I'll reset the module again, and now it should also join our network. And now if I go to WLED-node1.local, and there it is. So now I'm not directly connected to the module. The module's on my network. I'm on my network. And now this is the default page we get to. Now I need some LEDs to work with. So I'm going to use this ring of 16 WS2812Bs. I'm going to put this module on the breadboard. And then these are 5 volt LEDs. So I'm going to take 5 volts and ground from the module. And data I'm going to connect through a resistor to pin D4. If we go back to the WLED wiki and we look at the quick start guide, it says to connect the LEDs data pin to the module D4. Adafruit has a NeoPixel connection guide. I'll link to this. They recommend putting a series resistor between the data out of a controller and the data in of the LEDs. They say a 300 to 500 ohm resistor. 
Otherwise, you may get spikes on the data line that can damage the first LED. And they have lots of info about powering pixels. You can read up on that as well. I only have 16 pixels and I'm keeping the brightness down so I'm not drawing too much current, so it's okay to power it directly from here. But if you have a lot more pixels that draw more current than the module can provide, if you follow these guides to provide external power, whether it's 5 volts or if it has to be 12 volts, and you put a capacitor across there, make sure you still connect a ground wire between the module and the power source and the LED strip, because this data signal needs a ground return path, so it will go through this common ground connection. But we're just trying to get WLED set up, so let's go back to that. Depending how the LED color is showing up on camera, it may be easier to look at the color reflecting off of the breadboard. And one of the first things to configure while we're here in this menu, we're currently on red on this color wheel, but the LED is green. If we go to green, the LEDs go red and blue is blue. So we need to go and configure the color order for the LEDs. Also, the default in here was 30, but we only have 16 LEDs. And we know the color order of our strip has green and red backwards. So let's change it to red, green, blue. Save. Go back. Now, if we go green, the lights go green. If we go red, the lights go red. I'll turn down this brightness. So at this point, we are up and running. And you can play around with all kinds of settings. Let's just go to the effects. Take a look at something. Right now we are in solid color, so all the lights are going to be the same color. Let's go to an animation Android. So now it has this spinning red circle. Also, if we click preview up here, it will show us what's really happening. Red is scrolling along the LEDs over and over. So if we go back to colors, this only has one color. So number one in the color palette is going to control this pattern's color. We could go to green. Now the animation up here is showing that we expect green to be going along the strip. So back to the effects. If we choose circus, we can see there's supposed to be two alternating colors here going along the strip. And we do have that. This one called sweep has one background color and then another color goes and fills up along the strip and then peels back. So here we can change either of those two colors. So the green part, we could make blue and the background more red. There's also a free WLED app. So when you run that, press plus to add a new light, discover lights, and it found one light. So I can turn it off or on right here, change its brightness. If I click into it, there's the same menu we were getting on the website inside WLED. And now we can do all the same controls, and it's that easy. So now that it's up and running, we can play around with all of this and get to know how WLED works and how we can use it. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and share if you think somebody else may find it useful as well. Thanks for watching.